Hello. Thank you for being here. My name is Aaron Marquez. I'm a proud uh, veteran of the war in Afghanistan and a major uh, in the Army Reserve. So I just want to preface my comments by saying, uh, you know, there's nothing I say here today with the Department of Defense. Um, I, I felt called to serve our country uh, after the horrific 9-11 terrorist attacks. Um, but before I joined the military, I ended up joining, joining the American War, the Australian National Service Program. Uh, I spent two years doing community service work, working with inner city schools in Boston, uh, and then going to college, and then you know, still felt called to serve. Uh, when I graduated from college and moved home to Arizona, uh, that's when I first met uh, our congressman, uh, Ruben Gallego, and uh, I told him I was thinking about joining the military, and, and he tried to talk me out of it. <laughs> uh, and then, so I went off to basic training, and then I came back to Arizona after basic training as an Army Reservist, and I ended up um, moving into the same apartment complex, or uh, condo complex, where Ruben was living. And I knew I was getting ready to go on a deployment to Afghanistan uh, shortly after I came home from basic training. And you know, one one thing about Ruben is he's always willing to help and, and share whatever advice you know he can. Uh, there were some mornings where we actually I'd knock on his door and we'd wake up and we'd run to a local park, and uh, he'd help me with combatives training uh, before I went and did the formal combatives training with the the Army Reserve. Um, and then in 2012, I, I deployed to Afghanistan as a civil affairs team leader. Uh, as a first lieutenant, um, and I had to rely on you know the people to the left and to the right of me. And as a civil affairs team leader, I, there was only four of us, uh, four Americans at the base we were, we were at in northern Afghanistan, and we had to rely especially on our NATO allies and partners in Afghanistan. The Swedes and the Finns were were the infantry units that took me out and kept me safe on patrol. And, I know that Ruben cares so much about keeping our NATO ally partnerships in place, and, and so much of that work has been expanded because of President Biden. In Afghanistan, I was lucky to, to work on reconstruction projects, building schools and bridges, and women's centers all across northern Afghanistan, and I felt like we were making a real difference. I went back in 2016 uh, as an intelligence officer this time, working on counterterrorism operations. I saw the end of the Obama administration, and I spent six months in Afghanistan with Trump as our commander in chief. And I saw an immediate difference in how our rules of engagement changed, how the Trump administration started challenging things like the Geneva Convention and the international laws of warfare. And that meant in Afghanistan, we debated the international laws of warfare. And I had to remind American soldiers that we still had to follow the Geneva Convention. That's what matters in this election, and it matters to have a U.S. Senator with the foreign policy experience that Ruben has uh, to make sure we, um, we conduct a war the right way when we have to go to war. You know, part of what makes our nation great um, is the work uh, and the sacrifice of all of the veterans that have fought uh, previous wars uh, before us, like David Lucier, who's standing behind me, a Vietnam era veteran. <laughs> and I especially want to call out the sacrifice of the military families. You know, those of us that have deployed overseas, we know how much our families sacrifice to keep things together while we're away. Now, as a Marine, Ruben has that spirit. He understands the need to work collaboratively, regardless of political party, to deliver for Arizonans, and he will always fight for us. That's exactly what he's done in his years of service since returning home from Iraq. He's already passed bipartisan legislation for everyday Arizonans, on everything from keeping children safe, to creating good paying jobs, to his work at the state legislature, passing in state tuition for veterans, and he's championed veterans all along the way. I was lucky uh, to work with Ruben when he first got elected to Congress as his veterans outreach representative. And that was a priority for him for day one. It was always making sure whether the, uh, 
whether you lived in this district or not, if a veteran called our office for casework, we were gonna help them get the benefits that they earned and that they deserved. Throughout my years of knowing Ruben, I've seen him deeply care about our brothers and sisters in uniform, and it's personal to him because he's one of us. That's why he helped pass the PACT Act, which expanded benefits for veterans who were exposed to toxic substances. I'm one of those veterans. A year ago, Secretary McDonough was here in Arizona pushing for veterans to sign up for their PACT Act benefits. And I had never applied for my PACT Act benefits or any of my VA benefits, even though I spent years working with Ruben and, and doing VA Veterans Administration outreach for, for his office. But last year I applied for my benefits and today I, I, I have a disability rating and, and that wouldn't have been possible without the work that Ruben has, has done to pass the PACT Act. Ruben's work has been so important for Arizona veterans. His leadership has tangible impact on the lives of others who have served our country. It's a testament to the kind of representative he is, one who works, one who goes to work for all, all Arizonans. His opponent, Carrie Lake, couldn't be more different. You know, we, in the military, we, you know, there, there's a language of war, and sometimes that language of war gets used in politics, but whether it's Donald Trump or Carrie Lake, the, the language of war and the violent rhetoric that they're, they're using, we've seen you know, translate into violent action. Uh, January 6th, uh, doubting our elections here in Arizona, and it's so important um, that we elect Ruben Gallego to fight back against this rhetoric and give Arizona the representative that we deserve. Yeah. 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 Carrie Lake has no interest in working with others, in compromising and doing, doing whatever it takes and working with anyone to get the job done. Arizona deserves better. We deserve a senator who will put politics aside and deliver for our great state, for our brave veterans, service members, and their families. Ruben has served our country and state for his entire life, and I know he will continue to do so with honor. And then the last thing I just want to say is thank you to Ruben. Um, you know, there's multiple veterans up here, including myself, that have ran for office before. And Ruben is very loyal to making sure that when veterans run for office in Arizona, that he's always behind us. And he's been behind me in every race that I've ever ran. And I'm, I'm grateful for his support. I'm so excited to see him run for the U.S. Senate. One of those veterans uh, that I, I'm lucky enough to serve with on the school board of the Phoenix Union is Signa Oliver, uh, hey, hey, hey. Army veteran. Jag, amazing human yes. being, and I'm so excited to bring her up with uh, Signal for your next. Thank you, Aaron. It's only because I'm as boss, boss at this board that you said those things. You're not getting it right. Um, anyway, good morning. My name is Signa Oliver. I'm a proud veteran of the United States Army. I took that oath and signed that blank check twice. Once as an enlisted soldier in the Signal Corps with a field artillery unit. The second time after returning to school, I became a JAG officer. I am a native of Phoenix, Arizona. I'm a unicorn. A former Phoenix police officer, and as I said, the US Army um, Judge Advocate General Officer and I'm currently elected to serve on the Phoenix Union Governing Board that produced me. So anything that I do, blame Phoenix Union. Um, anyway, living a life of public service has been my greatest honor. When I served in the Army JAG Corps, our job was to ensure that justice was upheld in our military, that our forces operate in alignment with the rule of law, both internally and externally. And as a matter of fact, um, my last duty station was Fort Benning. And one of the things I was tasked with was teaching the rules of engagement and the law of war to everyone going outside the continental United States of America. Every single person had to come through Fort Benning and I got to teach them those rules of engagement and those laws of war. It is the threat posed to those principles by political extremists like Carrie Lake that has compelled me to speak out. 
she has referred to herself as Trump and heels. <laughs> Spend some time laying in that. <clears throat> Carrie Lake has shown us who she is. She doesn't care about the rule of law. She doesn't care about democracy. Her and people like her just want power, and we cannot give that to her. Self-interested politicians are not what the state of Arizona needs. We need someone with character. Someone who will stand up for democracy and the rule of law, who will look forward, not backward, and who will look out for vulnerable Arizonans. As many of you know, us veterans are often among the most vulnerable. Many of us return home and find ourselves without proper health care, without economic opportunity, or without a place to even lay our heads. Fellow veteran Ruben Gallego has been there for us. He served his country, he came home, and he kept serving. He kept taking care of those who sacrificed and served. Arizona needs more leaders like him fighting for us all day, every day. He's worked to improve the VA, making sure we can access our education, good paying jobs, and quality health care. He was instrumental in helping pass the historic PAC Act, which, like Aaron said, will finally provide benefits for veterans exposed to toxic burn pits, like some of my colleagues here today. After all of the sacrifice these heroes have made, that's the kind of support they desperately need and they deserve. Congressman Gallego has demonstrated his ability to be a leader for all Arizonans. We have so much going for us. This is one of the most dynamic and fastest growing regions in the country, and all elections come through Arizona. But there's still more work to be done. More than likely, there will be um, some vacancies on the Supreme Court. If you haven't noticed, this current Supreme Court is corrupt. We need a senator that will make sure that we have justices on the Supreme Court that don't have political agendas but are working for the United States American citizens. I had a friend who graduated from Harvard Law. When the immunity um, decision came down, she called me that morning and she said, why did we even go to law school? And I couldn't answer her. We cannot waste time allowing backward politicians like Carrie Lake to show distrust in our democratic elections or strip Americans of their rights. Whether it be veterans like us, women fighting for their rights, or seniors worried about losing their benefits, Arizona needs a leader who will champion the dignity of all Arizonans. Yeah. I have to tell this quick story, and I think I tell it every time I see Ruben. On that horrible day on January 6, 2021, as I was watching, as many of you were, with horror, that our capital was being besieged by insurrectionists, our representative was pulling people to safety. That's Ruben Gallego. That's him. That's who I want in the United States Senate. That's who we want fighting for Arizonans. Ruben Gallego is that leader, and I hope you will join me in supporting him to be Arizona's next United States Senator. I have the amazing, I have the amazing pleasure of introducing another United States Marine Corps veteran, Sergeant Gladys Vargas. Good morning, everybody. My name is Gladys Vargas, and I am the proud Arizona Latina retired Sergeant Marine Corps veteran. Like Ruben, I learned a lot from my time in the Marines. The Marines taught me discipline, resilience, and the importance of service, values that I continue to carry with me to this day. I, first, I have seen firsthand the dedication and sacrifice that our servicemen and women make, and I know the unique challenges we face when transitioning back into civilian life. Ruben Gallego understands these challenges too. 
As a Marine veteran, he has experienced the same struggles and triumphs that we have. We know what it means to, he knows what it means to serve, to serve. The sacrifice that comes with losing brothers and sisters on the battlefield, and he knows what it means to come home and navigate the complexities of civilian life after combat. Ruben has been a steadfast advocate for veterans, and that's something that Arizona needs. He has worked tirelessly to ensure that veterans receive the support and resources that we need to thrive, whether securing funding for our mental health or pushing for education benefits, Ruben has always put us veterans first. One of the key issues that Ruben has addressed in, is his mental health. Ruben has been open and honest about his struggles with PTSD, something that myself and many veterans struggle with. We have been, he has been a vocal advocate for increasing access to mental health services and he understands the importance of breaking through the stigma and ensuring, that, and ensuring that veterans have the support they need to heal and recover. Ruben also knows that education is a powerful tool for veterans transitioning into civilian life. When he was in the Arizona House of Representatives, he wrote a bill that allowed, that allowed all of us veterans to get in-state tuition at Arizona colleges and universities, no matter what state we come from. Yeah. 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 He has also supported initiatives that provide educational benefits and job training programs, helping veterans build successful careers and securing their futures. As a Marine, I am honored to support Ruben Gallego. He understands the struggles and strengths and our sacrifices. I urge all of you to stand with me in supporting Ruben Gallego for United States Senate. Together, we can ensure that our voices are heard and our needs are met, and our service is honored. Thank you, and may God bless our veterans and this great nation. Ruben Gallego. 
We need leaders like Ruben who help not only understand our struggles, but are committed on taking action. I urge you to stand with me in supporting Ruben for the United States Senate. Together, we can ensure that our voices are heard, our needs are met, and our service is honored. Thank you, and may God bless our veterans in this great nation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you to the Travis L. Williams uh, Post 65 for uh, allowing us to, to share this space. Uh, it's not in their official capacity, we rented out, so I'm gonna make sure you don't get y'all in trouble. Uh, but it's always good to be back here. Uh, and the, the commander was very nice and did not uh, tell uh, all the stories of us hanging out uh, at the bar uh, with other veterans, uh, but also a great community leader here. We have an annual uh, turkey uh, uh, drive uh, for uh, our community here. And when I say our community, I actually just live one mile south from here. And so every year um, since actually even before being elected, I've been very proud to help out with the turkey drive. And you know, sometimes if uh, these families don't come here and pick up their turkey for Thanksgiving, they will not get it. Uh, and it's been a great experience bringing my son. Uh, he still talks about it. He uh, usually comes and helps me deliver the turkeys. Right. Uh, and it's a great experience for him. He talks about it and asks about it when we're going to do it again. So, you know, let's give credit uh, to this, uh, the, the great veterans here because they are continuing their service to their community uh, in every which way possible, uh, especially in this area here, which has got a lot of hardworking uh, Arizonans that have been hit hard at times. But they always can look here for a helping hand. So let's give a round to all the veterans here. Too. I'd also love uh, to thank both vets. Uh, not just for your support, but for everything you've done for families and for really a lifelong uh, friendship. Uh, I've been with the Vote Vets uh, since I returned from the Iraq War. Uh, and so it's been a, a great uh, uh, relationship and seeing everyone grow into the, the group that we are now. Um, as many of you know, I am a Marine. I may talk about it once in a while. And I'm a proud Marine. Yep. Simplified all my brothers and sisters yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. And with my time, I was taught about duty, honor, and sacrifice. When I deployed to Iraq in 2005 as an infantryman, I served with Lima Company 325. We saw some of the worst fighting of the war. In just seven months, I lost 22 of my brothers and a Navy corpsman. So I do know what it's like to serve, and then try to come back to civilian life. And it's not easy, and it wasn't easy for me. And in many ways, I have not returned from that war. And standing here this morning, I see a lot of familiar faces, old friends who know exactly, unfortunately, what I talk about. I entered public service because of you, because of veterans, particularly my Marine Corps brothers who served their country honorably in some of the hardest and darkest days of the war. We did not ask questions where they sent us. We did not ask questions when we were gonna come back. We didn't know who we were gonna be with, who we were fighting, and we just did not even know what the plan was. But we just knew that we were there to serve our country and to take care of each other. But when we got home, that's not the attitude the government had for us. We were left to our own as Deutsche and Marine Corps devices. Many of us ended up homeless. Many of us struggled with PTSD quietly and in the dark and it slowly crept on us, uh, for too many of us, far too late. And then many years later, we started noticing that our, our young brothers and sisters were getting illnesses that should not even be seen in men in their uh, late 20s or women in their late 20s. Cancers that are so rare, that's a statistical anomaly that are found all of a sudden uh, in groups of men deployed, women deployed together. And that's why I co-sponsored the Honoring Our PAC Act. Because it's a definite first step in many sort of you to address the long overdue health exposures to toxic burn pits. And when I say I understand, I understand. I live next uh, door to one for one month on an operation hit in Iraq. And there are brothers and brothers of mine that are feeling the effects. And I hope I am not one of them. But at least I know, should something happen to me, the government, the United States uh, 
my, the country of the United States will at least take care of me and take care of my families. It is scary. It is scary when I talk to some of my uh, brothers when they tell me what's going on with their ailments to think that I may lose them again. You go, Gallego, you go. The PACT Act ensures my brothers will receive the medical care and benefits that they deserve, that we deserve. It is about righting a wrong and fulfilling our promise to take care of those brothers and sisters where they are as old as Lucier, <laughs> a veteran of the Spanish American War. <laughs> <laughs> or some of these younger veterans uh, here today. I'm also proud to have authored the Restore Veterans Compensation Act, which ensures that veterans who qualify for VA disability can keep their separation pay. This is a crucial step in guaranteeing that our veterans receive the full benefits they're entitled without any reductions. I will never, ever give up on America's veterans. And in the Senate, I will always fight for the half a million veterans who call Arizona home. We are veterans. We're not Democrats, we're not Republicans, we're not independents. When we swore to protect the Constitution of the United States, we did that as Americans. And we continue to do that as veterans. So I'm glad that I'm surrounded by these veterans. People that do believe in a brighter future of America. People that understand that this is a country worth fighting for and that we will move forward together. Together. Because that's what we know how to do. We win when we fight together for our country, for our families, for the Constitution of the United States. Thank you so much, both vets. Thank you to my friends, my brothers and sisters in arms. The fight has begun. I need you in that fight. Let's get together and do what we know what to do. Fighting for our country. Let's do it. Semper Fi. Let's go. Thank you. Fix 
uh, myself and ourselves to actually keep continuing story in the country. And um, we're gonna continue doing everything I've been doing. We've been traveling the state. We've been talking to Democrats and Republicans independents. Yesterday we had a great meeting uh, at press conference with Republicans for uh, independents. Is that Carrie? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> you, know, we're, you know, when I talk about veterans, I also wanna make sure you gotta remember our Native American veterans. You know, and one of the best things that ever happened in this service is I got to meet two brothers, the my own brothers, that are not brothers uh, 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 to me uh, from the Navajo Nation. And because of them, I am I am obsessed about making sure our Native brothers and sisters also get the same uh, benefits. And we're the first campaign to ever visit all 22 federally recognized tribes. So we're gonna continue doing that, and hopefully that puts us over the top. But we're gonna fight uh, as if we're uh, one, or, one or two points down, because that's how we win. Yeah. Is it in Glendale? Yeah, you got one. Here's an idea. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, we'll be at the event tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Uh, Ruben, uh, the, the opposition seems to have turned into a cult. Uh, <laughs> any, in, you know, now that that now thing, uh, fellow veteran walls. Yeah. Uh, any any thoughts on how, how they come to some, you know, such a uh, mental state? Well, I, I'm not a psychiatrist, so I won't go into that, but I will tell you this. We're veterans, right? Um, you don't besmirch another veteran's service. Ever. 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 Right? right? He was in for 24 years. <laughs> honorable service. No veteran should ever call anyone else's honorable service out. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, we are, uh, that's just a, a rule we have among ourselves. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Thank, Thank you all. <laughs>